What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. Today I have a special video for the sniper boys of the channel and we're gonna go through every single sniper rifle of the game to see what is the best setup possible for those weapons based on statistics and numbers. It's not gonna be a rant video where I just give you my favorite setups but we're actually gonna go deeper into some facts about sniping in Battlefield 2042 and then based on those facts I'm gonna give you the best setup possible. I've done the same for almost every other weapon category and the link to the previous episodes is down in the description. Make sure to check that out as well so you can find your favorite weapon's best setup. Also, if you like these type of videos or you just enjoy the content of the channel, give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. It only takes one click and you won't miss out on the future videos. Right, so starting off with the most popular sniper rifle of the game, the SWS-10. This thing is popular mostly because of two reasons. First of all, it's a balanced weapon in almost any aspect, from fire rate to accuracy and muzzle velocity. And second of all, it just looks good. The thing really looks like a modern sniper rifle and conveys the feeling of actually being a sniper with a decent weapon in hand. For the attachments, let's start with muzzle. I believe the only attachment you need here is the extended barrel. Some people even argue that shortened barrel is also nice for close range gunfights, but you don't really need that and I'll let you know why in just a few seconds. So extended barrel actually gives you more muzzle velocity, which is the most important factor to take into consideration for a sniper rifle in almost any battlefield game, because with it comes less drop and that just means easier headshots. You're gonna have a very easier job at hitting those moving targets. Your enemies will have less time to react to the bullet that's going their way, especially in those longer ranges where you can actually see the bullet traveling. All in all, nothing beats muzzle velocity for a sniper rifle, and that's something that extended barrel provides. So pick that and leave muzzle at that, and let's move on to under barrel. Here, the first attachment that I recommend using is the BCG Light Grip. It gives you ADS accuracy, but decreases hipfire accuracy. The reason why I don't like Cobra Grip here is actually pretty obvious for most people. See, when you snipe, especially if you're sniping against other snipers, you need to be moving while shooting, and that's why Cobra Grip goes out of the equation, because it takes away that accuracy while moving, and on the other hand, you don't really need hipfire accuracy on a sniper rifle, so the BCG will be the first choice. The second choice is going to be the Master Key, which is an underbarrel shotgun and a monster weapon for close range gunfights where you find yourself surrounded by enemies. It's just a lifesaver and probably one of the reasons why SWS is so popular. And the third slot goes to Bipod, which is really a must for almost all the sniper rifles because of those possible long range shots where you really need perfect accuracy. For ammo, I like the high power more than anything else on sniper rifles and the reason is again, muzzle velocity. It also gives you some more damage in close range and you can really sometimes get body shot freebies on people who think they're safe but you actually deal more damage than a usual sniper with standard issue rounds. The SWS as you can see can have a muzzle velocity of 1125 meters per second with extended barrel and high power rounds whereas standard issue rounds even with extended barrel only provide 965 meters per second and you will see the difference between those rounds for yourself. Downsides of high power rounds you get slightly less fire rate and less bullets per mag, but it's worth it guys, believe me. And for the two remaining slots, just use standard issue extended and just standard issue. For weapon sights, it's just personal preference, but my favorite is the BKS 8X for medium range and long shot 12X for long range. And finally, the setup is ready looking like this. Next up, we've got the most accurate sniper rifle of the game, the DXR1. This sniper rifle is slow and there is no denying that, but man, this thing is a laser. It's literally a laser with minimum bullet drop, but it can be even more accurate with the right setup that I'm going to show you in just a few seconds. General tip though, if you want something aggressive in close range, the DXR isn't the weapon for you because it's a heavy sniper rifle and a bit sluggish for being aggressive. But medium to long range, this thing is gonna make your enemies cry, rage quit, call you a hacker, and those kind of stuff. So for muzzle attachments, I go for the extended barrel again. You don't even have a shortened barrel on this one, but honestly, even if I had one, I still wouldn't use it because this weapon is made for being a laser and that would be just pointless. So extended barrel is the way to go. For under barrel, you have a bipod by default and that's it. You don't have any other option, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. For ammo, I highly suggest that you pick high power over standard issue because it's gonna make this weapon even scarier than it already is. With high power and extended barrel at the same time, the muzzle velocity will be 1,365 meters per second, making this thing the laser beam that I was bragging about. Believe it or not, it will be very much a piece of cake to hit targets in about 400 meters. It becomes a regular shot, really. So make sure you give it a try and see the difference for yourself because it's gonna blow your mind, especially with the high power rounds. 
Standard issue extended and standard issue are going to be the next two options. For ammo and for weapon sights, I just use the BKS 8X for medium range and a long shot 12X for long ranges. Here's how the setup should look like. Next up, it's time for the anti-material sniper rifle, which is a heavy, sluggish, 50 caliber monster that might lack some agility and accuracy at medium to long range, but in close range, it's a one-shot kill guaranteed, and it really can be a pain in the ass because going against a weapon knowing you can die with only one body shot is just scary to begin with. So for attachments, we've got an easy job to do here. For muzzle and underbarrel, you don't even get to choose. There's a bipod by default and a default muzzle brake. For ammo, you have anti-material and anti-material high power rounds. High power rounds are useless here since you lose that one shot kill ability, but you deal more damage to vehicles and you get slightly higher muzzle velocity. Not worth it though and I recommend using the anti-material and then anti-material high power. For scopes, I just don't like to use a high magnification scope like the BKS 8X and my personal favorite is the Raven 4X and that's it. If you want to use a red dot sight, feel free to do that, but my choice will be the Raven 4X and the setup is complete looking like this. Next up, we've got the XCE bar which is the quickest sniper rifle in the game. Based on my personal experience, it's really hard to go against a sniper who uses this weapon because it's just ridiculously fast and unpleasant to go against. It just outperforms you in those shot counts and you should be constantly moving and dodging bullets. But again, for attachments, we don't have a hard job. For muzzle, I believe the tactical compensator is a good choice. Some more recoil wouldn't matter, but that accuracy will for sure come in handy and that's it. You can leave muzzle at that. For underbarrel BCG light grip for the first slot and then for the second slot a bipod should be equipped. I don't have the BCG light grip unlocked, I'm not really a fan of this weapon, but you know what to do when it comes to attachments. And for ammo there is something ridiculous about this weapon that you all should know. All the ammo types have the exact same fire rate, so the only downside you get for using high power is less bullets per mag, which in my opinion is totally fine. As you can see, with high power rounds, you get a muzzle velocity of 965 meters per second, making this weapon a little more competitive for those long range shots. So high power, then standard issue extended, and then standard issue. For weapon sights, the XCE scope is fine in my opinion. Pair it with a long shot 12X and you should be good to go. And the setup should look like this when all the attachments are in place. Last weapon here is a classic one, the Gold Sniper Magnum. Another fast and accurate sniper rifle, and it really gives you that nostalgia feeling when you play it. However, it recently got a secret nerf in the damage department, making it a little bit boring for close range, I would say. As you can see, before this change, the weapon would deal 88 damage in under 50 meters, whereas after this change, it only deals 75 damage in under 30 meters, and then for above 30 meters, it would do only 60 damage. This kind of sucks, but we can't do anything about it, and we gotta just deal with it. For muzzle, you don't have a choice. For under barrel, you only have a bipod, which must be equipped. For ammo, you only have standard issue, which comes in both extended and basic version that you have to equip them both. And for scopes, the BKS 8X with a long shot 12X should do the trick. And the setup should look like this. And with all that taken care of, today's video comes to an end. Hope you guys enjoyed and hope it was helpful. The last but not least episode of these series of videos will be out soon. And I'll be going over all the tactical weapons. I know so many people were asking for that one and now that is coming your way in the near future. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching guys and until next time, stay cool.